Pro Controllers. Now this is something I've been asked about since the very beginning of my channel on YouTube. Why am I not using so and so controller? Why am I not using this specific brand of controller that's clearly so superior to everybody else? Well, today I finally decided to answer that question. And I also want to answer what settings should you be using for your controllers in video games and what you should be looking out for and why some of these pro controllers are kind of a hoax really and don't really offer you anything beneficial in comparison to some of the pro controllers which in some scenarios do actually offer you some fantastic benefits. Now for those of you who are recent to the channel you'll probably fondly know me for hardcore and tactical shooters such as Squad and Hell Let Loose but for a very long time and in fact for most of my life I've played with keyboard and mouse and controller and I play controller on games like Battlefield and Modern Warfare purely because it's it's just, you know, muscle memory to me. And as a kind of way of proving what I'm talking about, uh, I'm playing with Jack Frags, Stoddy, and Mr. Pro Westy in the background. If any of you don't know these guys, they are fantastic PC players. Uh, Westy and Jack Frags, long-term FPS players with great skill, and Stoddy is widely known as one of the best snipers in the game, in more or less any game, Modern Warfare, Battlefield, wherever it happens to be, he is quite ridiculous when it comes to that kind of thing. And in these videos, I want to show that with the right settings and perhaps if these pro controllers really make a difference, that you can come up to this kind of level and you can have the right settings in place for you to be just as good as somebody with a mouse and keyboard in most scenarios. So today we are playing Modern Warfare and Warzone in the background and I am using the DualShock 4 which is just the standalone basic PlayStation 4 controller and I'm using the Astro C40TR. Now this was given to me by Astro so this video is technically hashtag gifted but it wasn't paid for, it's not a sponsorship, uh, they're not paying for this video and in fact they don't actually know that I'm making this video at all, but I just wanted to put that on your radar in terms of transparency. Now this controller will set you back a pretty penny, it's roughly I think it was £180 uh, when I received the controller, it might be cheaper now, and it's comparable to the Xbox Elite controller in the sense that both of these controllers are fully customizable and you can use softwares with them in order to change things like analog stick dead zones and sensitivities and change things like response curves and trigger delays and all these kind of important factors that will change how you use your controller and many of them come with programmable buttons as well so for example paddles on the back that you can program to be any given button so you can use it for crouching throwing grenades or whatever it happens to be that you find comfortable and what I've decided to do is I decided to play with both of these controllers. With the DualShock 4 standard, I decided to maximize the settings on Modern Warfare as best as I humanly could to get the most out of the controller. And with the actual C40TR, I've decided to change things within the software of the controller in order to see if I can get the most potential out of it. And then I'm gonna see if there's really any performance difference or anything that I particularly notice that I think is very useful. But before we get into this comparison and the evaluation and all these other kind of things, I want to talk about two important facts. Number one is the settings you should be using for every controller, and number two is why some of these controllers are not all what they're cracked up to be. So let's talk about the settings. There are, in my mind, two very important things you should be looking out for in video games. Number one is the response curve, and number two is the dead zone. Now, the response curve of controller is how the analog stick reacts to acceleration, and by acceleration, I mean movement of the stick. So for example, if you move it left and right, well, what is the behavior? How far does it have to move left and right to register certain inputs? It's a bit like, I don't know, fine tuning a steering wheel in a car. If you move it all the way to the left and it doesn't have power steering, it will take a very long time, and that's kind of the principle we're going for here. A response curve does exactly what it says on the tin, it determines the responsiveness of inputs to the controller. The other one is dead zones, and dead zones is how much movement is required out of the center of the stick in order for movement to be received. So for example, a dead zone is quite literally a circle right under your analog stick in a software format that if you make the circle larger, you need to move the stick more to make it consider any kind of input, and you make it smaller if you want even the most subtle of movements in order to be registered. Now the best response curve is an S-shaped curve, and this is often known as a dynamic curve. Now the reason this is massively important is because an S-shaped curve allows a really specific kind of acceleration that is akin to how people play on a mouse and keyboard. 
And you may be wondering, well, what the hell am I talking about here? Surely a controller is nowhere near a mouse and keyboard. And that's correct. But what most mouse and keyboard players will tell you, and in fact, what most people do in any given example, when they play mouse and keyboard, is they have two kind of formats of movement. The first format of movement is being able to snap left and right really quickly. Because if somebody shoots you all the way from the left, you want to be able to respond to that. And the second kind are very subtle movements, very slight movements with the mouse center in order to land those precision shots on sniper rifles and that kind of information. And the reason a dynamic curve is so important is because it mimics this behavior. The further your stick is to the left, right, up or down, the faster you accelerate. So you can snap left and right incredibly quickly by moving your stick left and right. But the closer to the center your stick is, the more subtle the movements become. And because of this S curved shape, what happens in the end is that your controller is capable of moving left and right very fast to snap to enemies around corners and respond to enemies firing at you very quickly. But then when you need to come and fire back and make those precision sniper shots, only very subtle movements will make very subtle movements. And you won't have to have this weird acceleration system, which often plagues standard curves of response. Responsiveness. Lowering the dead zone is also very important, because the lower your dead zone, the more input is received. Now, if you lower it too far, you'll notice that the controller feels almost erratic in behavior, but I find a 0.5 percentage on Call of Duty Warzone and Modern Warfare is enough to allow for very subtle movements in order to compensate for recoil and land precision shots. So let's talk about why some of these controllers are a hoax then, because as much as nice extra buttons are very helpful, ultimately at the end of the day, if the response curve of the controller is not configurable, and the dead zone is not configurable at a hardware level, then the controller simply isn't worth the money. The Astro C40TR and the Xbox Elite controller are two great examples of controllers that have configurable controllers at a hardware level. So you plug it into a software and you can change how the response curve works and you can change how the dead zones work. And that's something that you don't get the luxury of on most of these so-called pro controllers, but that is critically the most important thing that they can do. Because many of these games won't have the options of Modern Warfare and Warzone, and many of them, because of that, means that they're just not worth the money whatsoever. And if they allow you to have this custom customization of dead zones and response curves, then that makes them very, very useful. A game like Battlefield, for example, doesn't have dynamic response curves in the controller menu. But if your controller is hardware designed to act that way and react to a dynamic response curve, then it means you won't have to change anything. Your controller is simply a plug and play component. And that's exactly what I did with the Astro C40TR. And in fact, you're even able to actually customize the curve itself and make it more or less acceleration or more or less responsiveness in certain scenarios, which is another cool bonus for those of you who are very specific and can know whether or not they need to tweak something if their aim is feeling off. So overall, did this pro controller really make a difference to my gameplay? Did it improve how I played? Well, the answer isn't entirely simple, but yes, I think is the answer here. The DualShock 4 is great, it's a very precise controller I think for first person shooters and allows for really great compensation and subtle movements because of its very small dead zones and not every controller necessarily has that. But the C40TR allows me to do this at a hardware level, so I'm not having to rely on whether or not Modern Warfare has these settings. And in fact, during the Black Ops Cold War Alpha, the menu didn't have the response curve settings or the dead zone settings, so the C40TR allowed me to take those settings into the next generation game. Whether or not those settings return in the beta and beyond is another question in its entirety, but most other first person shooters, the only game I can think of is Apex Legends, that offers this kind of customization and allows you to do these things with your controller. And if the games don't allow you to do these things, then you will suffer because of them in most first person shooter scenarios. Rainbow Six Siege is a good example of a game that would definitely benefit from some of these customization settings, and it just simply doesn't have it. Another really great feature of the Pro Controller was A, the premium feel, which was nice and weighty. I felt very good in my hands and grippy, which is nice, but also the ability to change the layout of the controller, which is something that I believe is available on the Xbox Elite controller as well. On the Astro C40TR, you're able to swap the D-pad and the analog stick to put it into either an Xbox layout or a PlayStation layout. And as somebody with relatively large hands, 
I find the Xbox layout much more comfortable and less compact. Another really wonderful feature is the ability to reduce the trigger delay. Now, for those of you who are unaware, when you press L2 or R2, or the left trigger and right trigger, those triggers have springs in them. And because of that, even when you press down, there is a couple milliseconds delay between you wanting to fire your shot and the shot actually firing. On the C40TR, adjusting these springs happens with a flick of a switch, and you can make your guns more rapid firing simply by adjusting a tiny, tiny switch. And that's a really great feature, again, that not only doesn't feature in many game settings, but is something that can be a massive advantage of the controller in every scenario. Another really wonderful thing, and probably the best point as well, is the extra paddles. Now this is something you'll probably get on most pro controllers, but again, those don't really come with the software configurations that I deem are relatively important to this kind of example. But when you combine that with certain first person shooter controller layouts, and in this scenario I use the tactical layout, it means that I was able to crouch prone, interact with items, throw grenades, fire my weapons, and also do things like melee without having to move my thumbs off the thumbsticks. Those extra two paddles which sit behind my two middle fingers when I hold the controller meant that I was effectively able to have two extra buttons capable of doing things without requiring movement from my thumb, and I think that's a vitally important thing because when you're playing on mouse and keyboard, one of the wonderful advantages of it is that as a mouse player, your right hand is always aiming at any given point. You never have to worry about, you know, scrambling to interact with something or moving off of your mouse in order to interact, open a door, whatever it so happens to be. But you do have to do that as a console player in some examples. And unless your control scheme is absolutely picture perfect and can do it without that, then you will need those extra paddles and they can come in quite handy. So overall, the verdict here is quite simple. Yes, a pro controller can actually improve your game and it can make you a better and more competitive player by being able to adjust the dead zones, being able to adjust the responsiveness curves, and also being able to fine tune the controller in terms of the extra paddles and other things about it that you want, like the trigger delay, it means that you will have a massive advantage over people using a DualShock 4, especially in games where they don't have these controller customizations, because Modern Warfare and Warzone is an example of a game that is rare in terms of how much customization it allows you to achieve. So if you're looking to buy a premium controller and you want that premium feel and you want the extra ability for some more buttons and hardware configurable changes, then I highly recommend the Astro C40TR. I also highly recommend the Xbox Elite controller and I think any controller that really allows these hardware changes through a software and doesn't just give you some extra paddles and supposed customization options is a much better investment for your money than most of these other so-called pro controllers on the market. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope you've enjoyed the footage too. I think this footage is really great and demonstratable that as a controller player, I'm competitive with the likes of some of the best PC players I think are on YouTube right now. And I think that's a, you know, a really wonderful thing to have as a controller player in terms of being just somebody who's able to keep running with players who are on different platforms and also hold their own in any situation. So folks, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Please leave a subscribe if you want to see more of this content, and I'll catch you again in another video.